The purpose of this video is to give you an overview of the history of aquatic plant management and how it affects our water quality in Lake Manitou and then outline your association's goal to monitor and manage plant life and water quality as we move forward. In 2006, a highly invasive aquatic plant was discovered in our lake. The DNR closed our lake and started an aggressive treatment to eradicate this plant that would last for a decade. In 2011, the hydrilla tuber was 99% eliminated. Extensive dive audits and spot treatment was done each year, and finally, in 2017, the treatment ended. Although we won the battle, the lake was left with minimal plant life, which is essential to filtering our water and keeping our lake healthier. No one wants to return back to the days where plant life takes over and, lim and limits our recreational activities, the very reason we live here. In 2016, the Lake Manto Association thought it wise to hire Clark Aquatics to monitor our lake for the purpose of tracking the plant life return and eliminate any invasive species as they emerge along the way. Clarks did three surveys that year, one in May, one in July, and the last the end of August. They created these maps identifying what plant, what type of plant and where they were returning. You can see by color light to dark green, yellow to orange, and then red for highest concentrations that in general the plant life is starting to come back. If you'd like more detailed information, get a hold of one of our board members and we can supply it. In 2017, we thought it prudent to do the same studies with Clarks, one at the end of May and the other in mid-July. Once again, you can see where the plant life is coming back, even more than in 2016. In addition to these studies, the DNR released Lake Manitou's Vegetation Management Plan update in February of this year. <clears throat> It too confirms Clark's studies that our valuable plant life is on the comeback. Most obvious, it is very noticeable to many of us in the last two years that plant life was ever present to the point where we fear limitations on our recreation. It is important to note that native plant life is healthy for our lake. The debatable question is how much is enough? This monitoring should help us do a better job answering that question and balancing our management for the benefit of all stakeholders. Given our certainty based on fact, the aquatic plants are coming back. In 2018, the board decided that only two plant life studies are necessary from Clark's, one at the first of the boating season, season and the other at the end. If it is determined that invasive species are present, we will plan on having Clark's eradicate them. We have supplied a video from Clark's to explain the process. If you have an aquatic plant concern, we encourage you to contact Clark so they can factor your concerns into the big, quit, big picture as they move forward. Also this year, we will have Clark's focus on the prairie. As you know, the prairie is a shallow area in the middle of the lake set aside as an eco zone. The goal was, and still is, to have plant, native plants establish themselves in these shallow waters. This has not been mapped, but will be in 2018. We will be focusing on this area with more intensity this year. Many have cons expressed concerns about the water quality of the lake. Manitou is a mostly shallow lake with abundant amount of nutrient-rich sediment that has accumulated on the bottom from its massive watershed and organic accumulation. Boat traffic, wind events, rain wa water runoff all can affect the clarity of our lake overnight by stirring nut nutrients up and increasing the possibility of algae bloom. So, as a result, data taken at certain times can paint a bleak, bleak picture of our water quality and then taken at other times a very rosy picture. When our lake gets stirred up, <clears throat> we are subject to algae blooms and algae blooms can threaten fish life and plant life. Manitou has a high biological production rate, but as such, in general, Manitou's water quality is very good for the type of lake. As the plant life rebounds, your association is having Clarks also do water sampling in, the multiple, in multiple areas of the lake. This data, along with the data we currently have from the DNR, will continue to support that we are all heading in the right direction with our lake's quality. So let's recap our goals. Number one, monitor and manage plant life 
and gather water samples to measure progress. Number two, keep invasive species from establishing. Number three, educate about how to minimize man-made contributions to water quality, which include boat traffic, yard treatment, and seawall construction. Number four, maintain a dredging program that monitors and cleans out current sediment collection basins and explores opening up certain navigable waterway areas. Number five, pursue a sustainable sediment collection solution for Rain Creek, our largest water inlet. And number six, support the Soil and Water Conservationist District as they work with Lair to study your watershed south of the lake and recommend sediment collection bases upstream from Lake Manitoba. <clears throat> we need your support. If you're a member, consider becoming a bronze, silver, gold, or diamond member and get others to join. Tell them about all the things we're doing. If you're not a member, please consider supporting our efforts. We appreciate all the support that you give us.